Good morning once again. And so we are going to now start the day two of our graduate student paper kiss, uh, Joe Sugg graduate student paper competition. And our first speaker this morning, uh, the presentation is entitled Evaluation of Wild Peanut Genotypes for Resistance to Thrips and Thrips Transmitted to Metaspotted Wolf Virus. And so Yizhu Chen will be our first presenter. Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Yiju Chen. I am in, I am in the Department of Entomology at University of Georgia. Today, I will be talking about three bone disease. Tomato spotty wheel virus, TSWV. This virus was first described in Australia in 1990s. And it is first reported in the US in Texas in 1971. Currently, the virus was is belong to a genus also Tospor virus. Tospor virus is transmitted by threes in propagative and persistent way. In Pina, tobacco tree is the major vector. This three bone disease became common disease after 1986. Every each year, no, the each previous each year is a it caused about 12.3 million rows in Georgia in peanuts. However, the yield of peanut in Georgia is still high because why? We have the good cultivars. The cultivars improve the field resistance. However, growers still try to minimize their risk of the disease before planting their virtual laboratory selection, the planting day, and to roll down the index. And laboratory selection is related to the resistance, and planting day is related to the three populations. But right now, there is no variety of pinna is really immune to TSWV. We need a new source of resistance. We always knew it's good for long-term disease management. And wild gene is a potential source of TSW resistance. So in this study, we cooperate with Dr. Soraya Bertioli. And she is a plant breeding scientist. So we have, we got many wild gene type peanuts. We used 11 diploids genotypes and seven error tetraploids genotypes. And in each test, we use Georgia Green as our standard. Georgia Green is susceptible to virus. So therefore, we can know the difference between genotypes and cultivar peanuts. So in this study, I will use the three media inoculation to evaluate the resistance. So the first step is to build up the viroliferous colony, the three with virus. The interaction between virus and trees is tricky because three only acquire virus in larva stage. So it means can transmit virus. It means if the three acquire virus at adult, uh, during adult stage, they, not, they are not able to transmit the virus. They carry a virus, the virus can replicate in their body, but they are not able to transmit the virus between plant to plant. Okay, here show the special catch for maintaining the colony. Once we got a bunch of trees, we can start our inoculation. We put 10 trees in one tube and then put the two in, into peanuts. And the peanut is about one week to two weeks old. And then we will cover the pressed cylinders in case of three fly away. And each genotype has 10 plants. And after the three weeks inoculation, we will detect the virus by double antibody sandwich ELISA. 
if they are viral protein in the sample, and the antibody will combine to the protein and it show color, and then we can see. And we can use the photometer to know the value. Okay, we absorb absorbance at 405 nanometer. And this result is two kinds of meaning. One is a qualitative. We can know um, the sample is positive or negative. Is virus infection or not? If the value is higher, is higher than the mean of the control plus four-fold standard deviation, we think is positive. Otherwise, it will be negative. And it also gives us a quantitative result. Since we we include Georgia Green, Georgia Green as our control. So we can compare a virus title in each ELISA test. And how do we evaluate the three injury? We use feeding damage index, FDI. So before doing the ELISA test, they are three weeks periods. So I will check the plan every week. I will check how many leaflets with a feeding injury and what's the feeding scar intensity? The feeding scar intensity is from zero to three. More feeding scar, higher intensity. And also I will recall the total number of leaflets on plants and level we can calculate the index. And here is my results. The photo <laughs> the photo show the TSW symptoms, and we can see the symptoms are diverse. And some genotype show mosaic with yellowing. You can see, uh, yeah, okay. And some photos show wheel with necrosis, and some some genotype only show wheel, and some genotype show necrosis only. But most of them only show yellowing. The symptoms are not obvious. It's minor symptom. And how about the infection rate? And look at the chart, bar chart. The S axis is a peanut genotype, and the Y axis is a infection rate, the percentage of positive plants. We can see they are most. Uh, only three genotype is more sensitive, susceptible than Georgia green. And most of genotype is less susceptible to Georgia green. And let's look at, sorry. Let's look at the, the genotype with virus. And we can see this bar chart. The Y says virus titer. The, the right side is the infection rate is higher. The left side, the infection is lower. You can see the infection rate is not correlated to the virus titer. I don't know why. So probably I need to do more study. And here is a result about the three bidding injuries. And because we use the index to evaluate the injury, and here show the upper panel show the feeding index about two to three. And this is the symptom, not symptom, is the injury of the terminal. And lower panel is a feeding index about one to two. Even though now I only show the terminal injury, but during the test, actually, actually we evaluate the whole plan and then we got the index. And so how about the number of the feeding injury in the index? And looking at the those genotypes, you can see the red bar is Georgia green and most genotypes are most, most susceptible to Georgia green. They have more feeding scar, more injury. But you can see there are some genotype, there are no feeding injury. The index is almost zero. So, but I don't know why, but I don't want to jump to the conclusion because 
I think more evaluation factor I should consider. For example, um, temporal dynamic of disease development. Mm, sometimes I see the symptom at very early stage, maybe in one week, I see the symptom. And by some symptom show after three weeks later. So I think I should consider more factor and make the conclusions. And also from the infection rate, we can see the result. They, is no, they are a wild genotype. They didn't show virus. The result is negative, but five of them has three injury and obvious. So it could be the potential source to virus. And in my study, the higher infection rate is not associated with virus title. It's interesting. And for the three injury, either deployed species or aerotetraproist genotype, not species, okay, has very little feeling injury. So those results are interesting. So I think I should, I should do further study. I need more replications and biological data entry to verify the effect of genotype a real source of the resistance to the virus. And I will focus on the interaction between trees and virus to wild genotype. For example, to know the effect of the wild genotype on viral world. I will use the QBCR to, to know the virus copy number in the prints and to get a more accurate result to compare the virus title. And also I want to know how to how the virus in fact to the three biologies. So I will feed the three different leaves and to see what's the difference between the three longevity and fecundity. And now and then I can know the effect of royal genotype on three fitness. And in the end, I want to say my, thank my advisor, Dr. Babu Sri Mason, and my committee, Dr. Soraya Patioli, Dr. Mark Albany, and Dr. Shuti And also, I want to thank you, the, that mem the member in Wild Pinar Lab, Mark and Wendy. I want to thank you all of my lab members. And thank you, I can take questions. Thank you very much for that presentation. And uh, let's go to questions. We have uh, the first question comes from Sham Tullery. And the question is how many reps of each wild species allotetraploids were screened or scored rather? Yeah, so that's, that's one of the reason I don't want to jump to conclusion because the last year I just screened the about Okay, actually it's adding genotypes, but some of them have replicated, some of them that we didn't do, we didn't repeat the experiments. So I, w I just want to choose few of them and to do further study. So actually maybe one, two, three replication, yeah. Okay. Not, yeah. All right, uh, second question is what do you believe is the relationship, is there a strong relationship between symptoms of feeding injury by the thrips and a susceptibility to tomato spotted wilt virus? Is there a relationship or is it, uh, they're just two separate measurements or scores? Actually, I evaluate the three damage and uh, the disease in the same experiment. Yeah, it's hard to evaluate. Probably it's good to separate, but they are cross related because the TSWV is three bone disease. So if with all, with all the trees, the TSW, yeah, it doesn't matter for, for PINA, but because trees, so PINA can get disease, of course. So when we study the, the better bone disease, I think because 
maybe because I'm an entomologist, I think the tree play an important role in, in the disease management. So, but how do you mean, uh, how do I improve they are co uh, cross relative or uh, I, yeah. Okay, All right. yeah. very good. Uh, thank you for your presentation <laughs> and this concludes our time.